Today we bring you tips for success in the flipped classroom. Number one, your two best friends are rewind and pause. You forget to write something down? Rewind. Need to catch up? Pause. Need to go back to review something? Rewind. They're your best friends. Use them as often as you need to. Tip number two, if you have questions as you're working, be sure to write them in the margin of your notes. That way you can ask when you come to class tomorrow and you can get all the answers that you need. Tip three, pause the video when instructed and try the examples. Don't just look at it. Don't just copy the answers down, but actually pause the video. Think about the questions. Actually try them. You might find that they're pretty exciting. Remember, good study habits are your ticket to success in algebra. And now for our feature presentation. Suppose we have a set of test scores. They range from 0 up to 97. Mr. Weller, our principal, asks how did the kids do on the test? Well, what do we tell him? The median is 84. The mean is 79. Do we tell him the scores were around 79 or that they were around 84? Take a look at the scores. They start at 0 and they go up to 97. Which do you think best describes these test scores, 79 or 84? Write that down off to the side. In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can describe sets of data. We'll begin by calculating the mean, median, and mode. Then we'll discuss outliers, which are values that are much smaller or much larger than the rest of the values that we're working with. We'll understand the impact that those have on both the mean and the median. Finally, we'll be able to answer Mr. Weller's question, which is the best number to describe our data set? the median of 84 or the mean of 79. Let's begin with a quick review of mean, median, and mode. The mean is the average. The symbol for the mean is x bar, x with a line over the top of it. To calculate the average or the mean, we simply add up all the numbers that we have and divide by how many there were. In this case, there were eight numbers, so we add them all up and divide by eight. That gives us our mean of 11.375. The median is simply the middle number. We list the numbers from smallest to largest, and then we find the one that's exactly in the center. If there's only one number in the center, then it's easy. That's your median. If there's a tie, as there is here with 9 and 15, we simply average them. 9 plus 15 divided by 2 is 12 the median is 12. Finally, the mode. The mode is simply the number or the item that came up the most often. In our data set here, we have two number 15s. Because that shows up more often than any other number, we say that the mode is 15. Next, let's talk about outliers. Here we have a set of test scores. Almost the same test scores that we saw in the beginning, except we start at 65 instead of 0. We see that we have a median of 84 and a mean of 83. But what happens if we change that 65 to a 0? All of a sudden, the mean has become much smaller. The mean, or the average, went from 83.4 down to 79. The median, however, stayed the same. That number zero is called an outlier. It's called an outlier because it's pretty far from the other numbers that we're working with. All of the other numbers were from 70 to 97. Zero is pretty far away from all of those. It's kind of the oddball. If we have a situation where we have an outlier, well, we have to take that into consideration. How do we answer Mr. Weller's question? How did everyone do on the test? Well, it turns out that 84 probably describes all of the scores best. Notice 84 is kind of in the middle, and it's closer to more of the values than 79 is. If there's an outlier, it turns out the median is the best way to describe your data. And so we'll tell Mr. Weller that the test scores were right around 84. And here's the moment you've been waiting for, your opportunity to work with the mean and the median. 
Suppose we want to find out the typical amount of money that students bring to school. We go to the cafeteria and we conduct a survey. We ask 16 random people how much money they have on them and we record the results. Here they are. The first thing we want to do is calculate the mean or average amount of money that each student has. Then we want the median amount of money that students have. Finally, determine which one of these statements is true, the mean is equal to the median, the mean is less than the median, or the mean is greater than the median. Create a dot plot and determine the shape of the data, symmetric, skewed left, or skewed right. Please pause the video here and complete this example. In this example, we find that there's a mean of $3.75 and a median of $3.75. It just so happens that if your data is symmetric, the mean and the median will be the same. Now what if we conducted the survey, the same exact question, at West Arondequoit High School? We asked 16 people and the results were slightly different. Please pause the video here and answer the questions that are related to this data. In this example, we find that the mean is $4.03 and the median is $3.75. Notice we have two outliers, $6.50 and $7. Once again, they're outliers because they're pretty far from the other values. When the data is skewed right, the mean is greater than the median. Take a look at this. Really, the original data and the data for West Arondequoit are almost the same. The only difference is that we took the $4.50 and they were turned into outliers. Notice what happened. The median stayed the same, but the mean moved toward the outliers. When you have outliers, it affects the mean, but it does not affect the median. We conducted the survey a third time. This time we went to Brighton High School. The results once again were slightly different. Please pause the video here and complete the questions related to this data set. Here we find that the mean is $3.34 and the median is $3.75. Our dot plot shows us that we have a couple of outliers, $1.25 and $1.75. The data is skewed to the left because that's the direction of the tail. The mean is less than the median. Really, once again, this is the same data set we started with, except in the case of Brighton High School, we took the two people that had $3 and we turned them into outliers. Notice what happened to the mean. The outliers caused the mean to move toward them. The truth of the matter is, whenever you have outliers, the mean moves toward them. And so here's what you should know. In addition to calculating the mean, median, and mode, you should know that if a data set is symmetric, you should use the mean as a way to describe it. If the data set is skewed, you should use the median. The reason for that is that if you have a data set, the mean moves toward the outliers. If your data is skewed left, meaning the outliers are on the left, the mean moves toward the left. If the data is skewed to the right, meaning that the outliers are on the right, the mean moves to the right, and therefore it's been impacted. The median, on the other hand, is not impacted at all by outliers. This is everything you need to know to get started working with mean, median, and mode.